Good afternoon and welcome as we celebrate the Palm Sunday of the Passion of Our Lord. We are going to begin our liturgy in the parish hall. So um, if, if you haven't already picked up a palm, if you'd pick up a palm branch and move into there if you're physically able. And also there's a worship aid for our hymn of preparation. So you might want to pick one of those up too. So we'll meet you back. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and works of charity. This evening we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may one day have a share in his resurrection and his life. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem with him, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has a need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches 
so that they, that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those who followed, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us now go forth in peace. silent prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, that I may know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, 
God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, A woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen. I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and they promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. Jesus,
When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have, raised, but after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have had their face, faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But vehemently, he replied, even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open, and, he didn't, and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. 
At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind, and he ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, Their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and said nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ? the Son of the Blessed One. Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, prophesy. And the gods greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out to the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept.
As soon as morning came, the chief priests, with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held the council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things, and Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call King of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews. And they kept striking his head with a reed and spitting on him. They knelt before him in homage, and then they mocked him. They stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and let him, <coughs> and let him out to crucify him. <coughs> they pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, 
my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, look, he's calling on Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him while he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus entered Jerusalem in a blaze of glory. But it is not long before the tide turns. The reading from the prophet Isaiah foreshadows Jesus' plight, but also his commitment to go the distance, to show us how deep his love for us and God is. The reading from Philippians further details the cost to Jesus, but also the triumphant end of the story. Finally, the passion narrative brings us into the height and depth of human activity through the choices of a diverse away array of characters. Elizabeth will offer some further thoughts on The musical Hamilton opens with a song summarizing the historic figure's path, sung by the lead actor and other principals at its conclusion, each character offers a crystallization of their relationship. We fought for him. I died for him. I trusted him. I loved him. And finally, I'm the fool who shot him. I thought of this as I prayed with today's scriptures 
not because Alexander Hamilton is Christ-like, but because the narrative form of the gospel seems similar. Throughout the passage, we encounter many characters who related to Jesus in different ways. As we move forward toward Holy Week, we might benefit from pondering who these people were and if we might be like them. We first meet an unnamed woman who boldly anoints Jesus with a rare, expensive, perfumed oil. She breaks open the jar. It will not be used for anything further. She pours the oil freely. Nothing is held back. This is not the action of the penitent woman of other gospel passages. This woman has autonomy and some wealth to be able to be so generous. She anoints Jesus' head. She is demonstrating her knowledge and appreciation of who he is. She anoints him as a king would be anointed. <coughs> Grateful for her ministry, Jesus accepts it in anticipation of the burial ritual. He is resigned to his fate. As the letter to the Philippians states, he emptied himself, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death. Jesus was prepared for what would happen. Are you, have you been, can you be this woman? Do you have the generosity of spirit to minister to Christ and his people, his body? On the other side of the character coin is Judas, who offered to turn Jesus over to the religious officials. He did not ask for money, although it was proposed. What was his motive? When Jesus, sitting at table, noted that someone would betray him, Judas was presumably one of the many who said, surely it is not I, Lord. Later, Judas would identify Jesus to those who had come to arrest him with a kiss, the standard greeting of pupil to teacher. Why was he still pretending to be Jesus' friend? Have you ever betrayed Jesus, pretended to be his disciple when you were really seeking your own end? Did you know, do you know, that Jesus willingly accepts our failings as he did those of Judas? Peter asserted and probably believed that he would die for Jesus. However, Jesus knew the truth of his rock's character, that Peter was not as strong as he believed himself to be. I see him smiling gently as he warns Peter of his future denial. How alone Jesus must have felt as he prayed in the garden. No one could stay awake. Jesus' faithful friends were neither. Have you ever abandoned your friendship with Jesus, chosen not to attend to someone's need? Have you ever hidden your Catholic identity out of fear or discomfort? Can you trust that Jesus forgives our weakness? There were powerful people in the gospel narrative, religious authorities, a civil leader, and their minions. They perceived Jesus as a threat, a political religious agitator. The charges against him during the trial by religious authorities were that he had threatened to destroy the temple and that he had blasphemed. The conviction for which he was executed, as noted on the placard placed by Pilate, named his offense as King of the Jews. Have you ever acted out of self-righteousness, serving as judge and jury without considering the facts? What were the consequences of this action? 
we must also acknowledge the crowds who shouted, crucify him. Their state of mind was not exceptional. On January 26th in 2021, we saw how ordinary people with ordinary, ordinary lives could be whipped into a frenzy of violence. In the 1990 film, The Field, set in Ireland, an American industrialist aspirations threaten the way of life of a small Irish village. When this stranger is murdered, the whole town colludes in hiding the identity of the perpetrator. Unable to bring his parishioners to a place of integrity, the priest locks the church, refusing access to the sacraments, and observes that humankind abides closely to its beastly roots. Have you ever gotten caught up in a wave of mob energy, whatever the cause? Been in a moment when reason was sacrificed to the passion of the people around you? Is there something of this that is regrettable? Simon of Cyrene was conscripted to help Jesus, severely weakened by torture, to carry the crossbeam of what would be the instrument of his death. He couldn't refuse, given the circumstances. How might he have felt as he assisted this tragic figure? Have you ever found yourself strong-armed into a volunteer activity and realized later how important it was for you to have done what you did, no matter how grudgingly it was undertaken? Mr. Rogers frequently quoted his mother's advice about navigating a crisis. Look for the helpers. In the gospel narrative, in addition to the unnamed woman at its beginning and Simon, we see the woman who kept watch near the foot of the cross, Mary of Magdala, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and Salome. Having no ability to change the circumstances, they offered a ministry of presence. There was also the centurion who, while a party to the execution, was so taken by his encounter with the crucified Christ that he was compelled to honor a profession of faith. Truly, this man was the Son of God. Finally, there was Joseph of Arimathea, who respectfully and tenderly saw to the disposition of Jesus' body. When have you been a helper? When have you stood by someone facing a terrible trial or affirmed someone's identity amid adversity? When have you accepted the finality of a situation and treated another with dignity, acknowledging the sacredness of their humanity? The closing song in Hamilton focuses on the people whom he had left behind, and most especially his wife, his widow, Eliza. She turned her mourning for his tragic death into action, including advocating for an end to slavery and building an orphanage. She talked with those who served with him, and she recounts their story, the musical tells us. The narrative of Jesus' passion is likewise filled with saints and sinners. If one looks past the crucifixion to the decades and centuries that followed, we see a similar plot line. Those weak or powerless individuals went on to tell his story and continue his mission. We too are part of the narrative. As we prayerfully walk through this week, May we look for Jesus. May we be the storytellers and the people on a mission, for we are the people who follow him.
Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We come before the Lord and one another with our prayers and our hopes for the communities in our world, our nation, our lives. For the church, may Holy Week bring each of us closer to the love of God, the good news of Jesus, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, your mercy, Lord, your mercy, at all levels of government and society. May they reflect the true meaning of leadership in serving the public, especially those in greatest need. We pray. Lord, your mercy, Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. For those living in Sudan, Gaza, Haiti, and throughout the world who suffer life-threatening hunger because of war. May a caring world find pathways to a culture of peace. We pray. Lord, your mercy, Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in our St. Vincent's Parish family who are seeking baptism and confirmation, Alexander, Kathy, Dylan, Jose, and Stella, may they be richly blessed with faith and the knowledge of God's love. We pray. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from mental illness and for their families and caregivers, may our understanding and compassion help enable them to enjoy healthy, fulfilling lives. We pray. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, before us in faith. May they rest in the embrace of our loving God, we pray. Lord, your mercy, Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. For the concerns expressed in our Book of Intentions and those we hold in our hearts, we pray. Lord, your mercy, Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son and the many blessings in our lives. And we ask that you continue to grant us what we need, that we may faithfully follow the Lord Jesus. We make these prayers in his name. Amen. I invite you now, if you brought an offering, to place in the baskets at the base of the altar platform. If you prefer to give online, you may do so by going to our website and clicking the donate button.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that these simple gifts may be acceptable to our gracious God. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own lives, yet by his sacrifice made once and for all, we may always know the power of your mercy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, holy, almighty, and eternal God. For though innocent, Christ the Lord suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins. His resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. her children. You embrace the people as your own and filled us with longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would not fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. From them you raised up Jesus, the living bread, in whom ancient hungers were satisfied. He healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners, yet death would hunt him down. With a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms and surrendered his spirit. Gracious God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us. and over our earthly gifts of bread and wine, that we and they may become the body and the blood of Christ. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to table with those he loved. He took bread and praised you, God of all creation, he broke the bread among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he poured a final cup of wine and blessed you, God of all creation. He passed the cup among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Now 
let us proclaim this mystery of our faith. Save us, save us, save us. Gracious God, we commemorate Jesus, your Son, as we offer you his sacrifice. Death could not bind him, for you raised him up in the spirit of holiness and exalted him as Lord of all creation. May his coming in glory find us, ever watchful in prayer, strong in love, and faithful to the breaking of the bread. Rejoicing in the Holy Spirit, your whole church offers thanks and praise. Together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Edward, our Bishop, and all whose lives bring hope to this world. Lord of the living and the dead, awaken to the undying light of pardon and peace, those fallen asleep in faith and those who have died alone, unloved and unmourned. Gather them all into communion with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and all your saints. Then at last will all creation be one, all divisions healed, and we shall join in singing your praise through your Son, Jesus. For through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. And because we sincerely seek to follow the Lord, we can call upon God and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from needless worry and anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of the is now and forever. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of Christ be with each of you. And with your spirit. Let's share that with each other. Peace, peace Elizabeth. This is Jesus, the Son of the living God, here in our midst. Happy are we as we gather at this table. 
Lord, I am not worthy to you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Let's continue to pray together. Nourished by this sacred meal, we humbly pray, O Lord, that just as through, the, as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe. So by his resurrection, may you lead us to where you call. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
This coming Thursday will be our bring and share supper before the um, Mass of the Lord's Supper. And volunteers are needed to help setting up with kitchen duty and also cleanup. And you can sign up to volunteer in the vestibule. Also, if you volunteer to bring gifts to our homebound and nursing home parishioners, they're available for pickup in the parish hall. There's information in our bulletin about some St. Vincent traditions. Um, you notice that often the palms that are used in churches don't are just long, skinny things, and these palms have uh, fronds, long uh, leaves on them. Uh, we purchase our palms from um, uh, people who practice sustainable agriculture in Guatemala. So we're supporting those farmers. Also, on Holy Thursday, it's our custom to offer people, everyone, the opportunity to have a foot washed and to wash the foot of another. Now, not everyone has to do that, but there are eight stations, so it does, um, the, it's throughout the church, and so there's lots of opportunities. If you would like to donate towards our Easter flowers in memory of loved ones, there are envelopes available at the doorways. Last week, Father Kerwin brought in his sheep collection for people to um, see and possibly take home, and there were two sheep left after the 11 o'clock mass, and those are in the parish hall by the window to the kitchen. So if you would like to have one of his sheep, you have to get there fast. Okay. <laughs> The Zulo family has expressed great gratitude for your continuing prayers for Gabe as he battles cancer, and they ask that you continue your prayers that for his healing. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries or other significant events to note? Um, so it's also been our tradition in recent time to clap at the end of liturgy, but today's liturgy is a solemn one, and we're moving into the most solemn week of the year. So um, today, if we would just kind of, at the end of our hymn, just remain silent and quietly leave the, the room. Thank you. May you have a blessed week. Let's stand and ask for God's blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us, show his face to us and have mercy on us. May the Lord turn his smile toward us and give us peace. And may almighty God bless us this evening and throughout this coming holy week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy is ended. Let us live in the peace of Christ. <laughs>